we are going to factor expressions today by using the difference of squares formula. So the difference of squares method can be used when there is a difference, so a subtraction problem, of two squares, two expressions that are being squared. So first and foremost, we need to know the formula. So if you have an expression in the format of a squared minus b squared, something squared minus something else squared, then the way to factor it, the way to rewrite it as a multiplication problem, would be to write it as a plus b multiplied by a minus b. So we're going to see this formula in action in these three examples, and then I will leave you with some practice problems. So starting with x squared minus 81. I like the x squared term. I see the square in it, obviously. The 81, not so much. So this formula requires you knowing your perfect squares and you being able to recognize a problem, kind of being um, difference of squares expression in disguise, right? So I want to try to rewrite this expression so that I can see it like this. So let's try to rewrite this as something squared minus something else squared so that I can apply this formula. Obviously, x squared is just x squared. But now 81. 81 can be written as something squared, and that something is 9, because 9 times 9 is 81. So once you've got an expression in this format, it helps you identify what is your a, right? What is being squared first? What's your a squared? And then what is your b? And my b in this case is 9. Once you've identified those two things, you can just plug and play into the formula. So the formula tells me that once I have a and b, I'm just writing a plus b times a minus b. So my a was x plus my b was 9 times, again, my a was x minus my b was 9. So x plus 9 times x minus 9 is the factored version of x squared minus 81 when I apply the difference of squares formula, all right? Um, a good thing to know how to do is check these problems, especially because as a test taking technique, if you've got a multiple choice test and you've forgotten the factoring method, you can always just multiply out the multiple choices and see if you get the expression you started with. So this is a binomial times a binomial, so we're going to use FOIL or whatever other method you learned uh, to multiply this out. So x times x is x squared. Remember, this is just my check. The purple was my answer. Um, x times negative 9 is negative 9x. 9 times x is positive 9x. And 9 times negative 9 is negative 81. In the middle here, I see that these two terms, negative 9x plus 9x, will cancel out because they're zero. So those will cancel out, and that'll leave me with x squared minus 81. And that is exactly what I had started with. All right, so that's a, a good practice is to always foil out your two binomials at the end and make sure you end up with what you started with. All right, let's get these examples a little more complicated. So looking at the second one over there, 25 x squared minus 36. Remember, my goal is to rewrite it so that it looks like the blue, so that it looks like something squared minus something else squared. So what squared would get me 25 x squared? Let's look at the number part first. What number squared would give me 25? 5. And what about how can I, what can I square to get me x squared? Well, obviously x, right? So 5x is my a, right? If I was to write this out as 5x times 5x, I would get 25x squared. So these are the same thing. I'm just rewriting it as something squared so we can identify what our A is. And now let's find out what our B is. So how can I rewrite 36 as something squared? That something is 6. So now I found my B. So again, once you've identified what your A and B are, it's just a matter of plugging into the formula, substituting in. So the formula says, that I'm writing a plus b. So a is 5x, right? I had to square that whole thing, 5x, not just the 5, not just the x, plus my b, which is 6. Open a second parenthesis, and I'm doing a minus b. So here's my answer, 5x plus 6 times 5x minus 6. Using the difference of squares formula, that's how I factor my red problem, all right? One more example. It's going to get a little more complicated. I'm trying to rewrite this red expression as something squared minus something else squared. As you're watching, if you think you have an idea, please pause the video and try it. See if you can get it on your own without me and then see if you got it right. So I'm looking for something squared minus something else squared that will, that will not change the value of these, right? So what squared would get me 144x squared? Well, I know that 12 times 12 is 144 and I know that x times x is x squared. So here is my a term. 
And what about the second term? What squared would give me y to the sixth power? Well, I have to remember that when I'm raising a power to another power, I'm multiplying those exponents. So when I'm trying to think about what goes in here, it's going to be y to the something, right? Well, what times 2 is going to give me the exponent of 6 that I need? The answer here is 3. So that means that my b term is y to the third power. If I square y to the third power, I'll get y to the sixth power. y to the third times y to the third is y to the sixth. So now I've identified my a, I've identified my b, now we're just substituting into the formula. So a plus b, 12x plus y cubed times a minus b, 12x minus y cubed. So here is my factored version of the red problem after using the difference of squares formula. All right, I have got some practice problems for you that you should try to see if you've understood the concept here. If you get them right, the answers are in the description of the video. So if you get them right, shout yourself out. If you get it wrong and you can't find your error by looking at my answers, um, leave a comment and I will try to help you find your mistake.